Welcome to my Shoreline Studio. I'm Sybil Mustick. This is part two of our two-part series with Katie Rose Tataran and Katja Kovanen. Now they're working on their own imagery while I'm going to be working with a water strider and we'll, I'll be doing that uh, both in fabric and in paper. And then we'll finish off with some stencil work. So t stay tuned and um, enjoy the process because we have a lot of fun in the studio. <laughs> As you can see, I'm set up now for doing my little water skimmer. I have some uh, nice little mixture of uh, the Apple Barrel Antique White, a little bit of Titanium White, some GAC 900, and just a little bit of the Open Thinner to keep it fluid. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it's quite a nice liquidy mixture. And I'm just going to pour a little bit on. We're going to do a base coat. We're going to play with it a little bit. Just make some marks that will represent uh, waves in the water. I'm sticking with my theme of um, lakeshore creatures. The little water skimmer, uh, when the water's calm, will come out and skip about the surface of the lake. And they're lovely to see. I'm part of the local stewardship group. And we've been studying the lake and uh, doing the best we can to keep it uh, and keep people informed about how to take care of uh, small lakes. Um, the things to do are you know, not have your lawn right to the shore, not to use uh, things like pesticides and uh, things that might disturb or harm the creatures of the lake. Uh, there's a fair amount of phosphorus in our lake from runoff and uh, farming and so forth. We're in a large watershed that ends with a mountain and everything runs downward. And the more we can do to make sure that the lake is in good shape, uh, the more there is enjoyment for everybody. So I have a few marks here now, and we're just going to print this base layer. It's fairly fluid. It should print really, really well. And We'll just use a brayer here to and there's a few ripples. So that's why I didn't want to use the Baren. Make sure your edges are printing. And I've done the usual gorilla um, registration. We're just gonna flip it back. And as you can see, it's quite nice. So now then, uh, we're going to clean off the plate quickly. So I've just did a simple mixture here of the uh, carbon black and uh, just a little bit of the GAC 900, just so it's compatible, uh, you know, and long lasting on fabric. So we're just going to draw now. You notice I have my image on the side here. That's for ease of drawing. Otherwise, if I put my hand over this far, then uh, it might shake. Uh, and this way, it's it's going to be much better. And I'm going to probably get a cleaner line, hopefully. OK. So that's one leg, and here's the other one. And I'm going to do the head pieces, otherwise my hand will interfere with the legs on the bottom. So the little water skimmer has a very short front legs for some reason, and we're just going to put those in now. Kind of this particular one had 
an odd shape to his, but it's very interesting. So we'll just do what we can. He has some mouth pieces here that we can put in. And here is the little antenna which will go to the top of the head. We'll put a little bump on the end. Then we'll go to the eyes. and do some outlining of the outside. Now you want to work fairly quickly. This paint will dry even though it's got the open acrylics in it. So here's the side of the body. It sort of has coattails because of the folded up wings. There's a bit of the body underneath sticking out there as well. And the other side. And then you can sort of mess around with his uh, patterns on the back. They're extremely hard to see. These are very small little creatures. So there's some markings back in here. You can sort of play with them. Maybe stripes. Uh, and then where the wings start, there's sort of a rounded shape. And there's a meridian. There we go. And then we can put some maybe polka dots in there or something. A few little dots just to get some pattern in there. And then the lower wing. There we go. Now we're on to the legs. And I've got to hurry till I still have a little bit of color to put on the inside. I'm using the, I'm actually working on my easel so that my head doesn't get in, in the shot, which it was has been happening, so, and it's lying almost flat to the table. We'll get these little legs done properly. Now because my uh, plate here is quite clean, if I'm not happy with any of the marks, I can take something out, like there's a little spot there I might take out. Fine, okay, I'm going to clean my brush and then we'll go on to the next color. I'm dipping my brush directly into this uh, uh, Lumiere uh, by Jacquard. It's called Grape. And we'll just paint a little bit of purple. If I don't paint a color in, in this area, the bug looks transparent. So we just add a little bit of the violet here. And then we'll use the same color for... I don't need to um, add Jack to this because uh, it's already a textile color. It's designed to be permanent. Now we're just going to do some crazy shadows. And just put that in. And here the body is um, elongated in shadow. I'm just going to put that in. Just 
this sort of goes like this too. Right into the body. We'll put that part of the shadow on this side. There we go. Violet is a nice shadow color. I might just clean that one stroke up a bit and then we have to print because it's going to dry out on us and not print at all. So there we go. We can do a little bit of correction. And let's take this one out because it should be coming from the other side. So that's all right. So that's how you correct stuff. And we'll paint it in quickly. Just worried that that's going to dry on me, so so I'd be painting them quickly. So let's print. Use a brayer. Really put some muscle into that. I can see the. Purple ran a little bit, I think. And the big reveal. All right. It turned out pretty good. Um, I'm gonna, just going to do a little, there's a nice shadow here, and this one is not quite so distinct. So because we're registered, And here's where we had the problem. Remember, it was starting to dry on us. So I'm just going to do a little bit more. And we'll just thicken up that shadow a little bit. Do a little bit of negative painting. There. I'm using my hand because it's more sensitive and the baron that I usually use uh, may just make waves in this fabric. This is 100% cotton. The best uh, things to use, of course, are pure fabrics, uh, wool or cotton, linen, those kinds of things. All right, so we have our little bug, and we'll post that at the end. So here's what the final bug looks like. And I've done a whole lot of these. I don't know exactly what to do with them yet. Uh, maybe make a pillow. If you put them together, like opposite each other, they make quite a nice pattern. So who knows, maybe they'll end up in a t-shirt. Okay, on to Katie Rose and uh, Katya to see what they'll come up with. So what have you put in there now? It's I gold put in and the gold. Right. So this should be a, a sparkly kind of sort of a base. Yeah. Turns it into rosy gold. Mm -hmm. Watch your black paint there. <laughs> You're okay. Gorilla printing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so is that too much? No, paint? no, not for the fabric. It's good. For paper, yes, it would be. Yeah. Okay. So you can always peek right to see whether it's picked it up. And then if, it, if there's areas where it hasn't, then you just place it down again and keep 
gray or in the bag, but I think it's good. Oh yes, it looks lovely. Nice, okay. Wonderful. Now the next layer. The no. next layer. You do I that want will take probably it off more? Yeah, I would clean that plate okay. um, quickly. I'll keep um, experimenting to see if that second layer uh, effect works. Mm -hmm. The it silver is. didn't really show up, it's more just the cream. Mm -hmm. But it's mixed in there and yeah. there will be maybe a little bit of a sparkle to it later on. Mm -hmm. In terms of color, no, you probably won't see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just spray your plate. Okay. And then set up your image. Now, I had mine underneath, that helps, mm -hmm. or you can just draw it freehand on the plate. Mm -hmm. And then print as you go. It doesn't matter where the design shows up, you don't have to do the tape. Um, like if I'm just going to do a bunch of circles? Yep, yeah. I, yeah, I would place... Just to try it? I should do the tape or...? Yeah, I, yeah, I would put it back on, on the uh, cloth and then tape the side, yeah. Just do it like a... a, a as if you were doing a stamp. Put your plate back on there and, and place. There you go. And then tape it down. It was such a large piece of fabric, I guess we could have put some, you know, if you, we had that sizing or something like that to stiffen the material. And that's why freezer, freezer wrap works pretty good. Print at this point, right? So, are you okay? <laughs> and then I would tape it at this point so that it will, as you're adding stuff to it. Well, no. I just <laughs> you're gonna free it. Great person. All right. <laughs> yeah, love it. It's a nice thing about working with other artists. You know, it's just free wheelers. Everyone. <laughs> Well, I guess that mixture worked pretty good after all, so mm -hmm. maybe just takes time to, to work or something. Or just thicker paint, yeah. I can see that on a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had been trying to do something like this a few years ago with dye, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't quite get it to work well. Yeah. Well, now you now you can. Now you know how. <laughs> That's the joy this of the gel exciting. plate. It is so great. You know, I just bless the people who invented this thing. <laughs> shadow behind it of mm -hmm. the tree. Mm -hmm. Yes, sometimes there's something about black. And then with the gel plate, it picks up maybe a bit of color you had mixed in there. Some of the roses, I think, are coming out. Nice touches. Um, I guess you can't really show it to the camera yet. Well, mm. it's not really yeah, just hold it up. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So it looks sort of feature-like. 
Oh, I love the shadows that are happening in there. Yep. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering if your fabric picks up the paint better than mine. Mine had a little bit of polyester in it. And I think it kind of repels the paint a bit more than it should. Mm -hmm. I know it wasn't 100% cotton and yours is. So it's a much more agreeable fabric for that kind of thing. It is definitely. Yeah. And I haven't pre-treated it, it's just plain. No, it's a, that's what it needs, yeah. yeah. I guess you could put alum on it, treat it with alum like you do with marbling. Mm -hmm. So if you had pre-mixed your colors, you could have other colors other than... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And not saying you... I, I use yeah. blue, right? So yeah. you, you could certainly add color to it if you want. Mm. I'm not sure about Katie Rose's one, though. I'm not sure I would want other colors in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's really beautiful the way it's happening there. Although I, I guess the background trees, if you're doing your own background trees, could be bluish or something. With a mixture okay. of the black. Yeah. Nice cattail, beautiful. I mean, how can you tell you're a jewelry designer, right? <laughs> yeah. All those shapes. Beautiful shapes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about being able to draw. You know, if you've had experience at drawing, then things come. And especially mm -hmm. if you're painting as well, which I know Katya is too. And having that skill, drawing skill, makes painting so much easier. So when I'm mm -hmm. instructing painting, I always emphasize drawing. Do your drawing exercises. being able to build it. Yeah. Yeah, the trees are really wonderful compositional elements. And you design with the spaces, your nice spaces between the trees. That's one of my favorite ways of drawing. Yeah. Trees. Freeform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trees are gnarly, you know, they have all sorts of personality. They do. It's kind of funny because I grew up in a logging household, and so we kind of joked that I was a tree hugger, <laughs> because I really was. <laughs> I didn't want them to cut trees at all. <laughs> That's what my hubby says, that I've got more <laughs> paintings, pictures of trees than there are in the forest. <laughs> All right, one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to know when enough is enough, <laughs> right? <laughs> what do you think, Katja? Any I more? Think I should put another color on there. Why not? So yeah. I just, we just need to add the textile medium. Same, same so idea, just, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna do one more, so I Just need do to it clean. on the side of your, your okay. you've got that plastic oh, yeah. plate, okay. right? Yeah. So whatever color, you have all sorts of choices here. Ah, fantastic. Oh, yeah, that looks yeah. good. Very nice. All right, we'll put it in the drawing file. Yes. Can I try that blue? Yeah, the like teal? That. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's pretty. That is an iridescent paint. It's yeah. quite lovely. Yeah. It's a bit on the thick side, so add a little bit of your medium to it. Okay. Mm. And just a glob on your, on your plate. Yeah. You've got time to do another one, Katie Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 
probably get a printer thing. Do I print do you want, on this? Or? Do you want to print that as uh, just on paper? I would like to see. So you take the take another color and you moisten it on top. So then, do I do anything to this or just? Nope, nope. Just put it on and brayer it on. And it doesn't matter if you have that rose color in it on your brayer. Okay. That might be interesting. Okay. Because yeah, and that's about enough paint. And so what is it about the titanium? Is that just the reaction? I guess happens, it's or? some kind of reaction. Yeah, it, it softens the paint underneath on the plate. And just being opaque, uh, it makes the other uh, stand out more. I think that's the only thing, it, you know. So anything that's uh, a fairly opaque color, it doesn't have to be titanium in there. It could, but that's what seems to work the best, right? So. And how do I know when I'm ready? You're to ready. I'm yeah, ready? you're pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Now so let put your paper on and then let it activate. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it takes a bit of. And then do I press or just? Yep. Let yep. It... You bray it just like you would like um, right. before. Thank you. That thingy. That thingy. <laughs> the baren. 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 If you're doing wood cuts, uh, the Beren is perfect for printing. Oh. You might want to send for that. Uh, that one's a speedball Beren. Of course, the beautiful Japanese ones where they're exquisitely made are nice too, but of course they're probably pretty pricey. Alright, and so... But it's worth having. Sort of Just lift peek, and... Yeah, and see if it's picking up the... Yeah, everything up a little bit. Okay, you might need to activate the paint a little bit more. Uh, by just letting it just sit? Keep, yeah, let it sit and, and uh, keep rearing. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Is it coming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's almost dry when you start pulling it off, so... Mm. Can you grab that? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Did it come out? Go. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. So you notice the last tree that I oh, did yeah. was really, mm -hmm. really came off easy. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, I like that. Now these are, these papers are um, like bond paper, uh, computer paper, but they're acid free. So okay. you could mount them on board. Ooh. And so they could become a work of art, right? So they're perfectly viable. Oh, I like it. Feels a bit Let's see. Oh. I should have just left it with the black, but... No, I like the blue yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to go through this last one to show you how a gel plate works with the... with stencils. Okay. And I think I mentioned earlier that I sent for my little geometric shapes and I'm just going to keep the base really simple. This is uh, transparent iron oxide, which is sort of a yellow red. And I'm just sort of... It should print on my fabric really well. Get rid of fuzzles. Need another sheet of paper, I think, just to... Fluid acrylic uh, is very much like an ink, so I'm sure that... And we'll get her to try an ink and we'll see. We'll run an experiment with it. So I'm just uh, getting my base color down. And it's quite strong, as you see, right? So it's it works good. Now for the second layer, we have to think about what might be nice. So I'm thinking a turquoisey color might be quite nice. Again, we have to put all the different mediums on it. And I'm going to add 
and a little bit of the fluid just to make it last a little bit longer and I'll get it on here. So that's quite pretty. And reasonably thick for our fabric. Not too many brayer marks. <clears throat> Putting on a stencil. Now there's two ways of going with a stencil. You can take um, the deli paper because if you don't take the insides out then only the pattern of the geometrics on the stencil will show up. If you also take the spots out then that will show even more of the base color. So it's, it's your choice. I just sort of do the deli paper thing and it will pick up the inside circles. Do you see what I mean? Okay. So then, and that's all you're left with then. And that's good because we're going to be doing some stamping with our little geometric shapes. So we'll see how that shows up stamping. Lining up. It probably won't show up very well because it's I've taken a lot of paint off. But it gives you something. It's fairly dry so I haven't worried about putting paper on the back. So we're gonna... So it's subtle, right? So... Which is good. It's a start. So now... You have a choice. Okay, so we have that color and that color. Maybe we'll try a little bit of the blue. And because they're stamping almost directly on here. It's okay to mix them a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to make some marks on here. And we're going to stamp directly onto it looks very like mason like doesn't it <laughs> and we'll do a few of those They work great as stamps, don't they? I don't know if I have any ink left. A little bit. And this one will be a little more subtle. Same kind of shapes. Try doing it this way and maybe just off. But then I'll do another shape at the bottom. There we go. And we'll see if that shows up a bit better. Tiny bit of medium. It's supposed to be one to one but that's close enough. It will iron. And then we will do some wave lines. So your ink should should work, I think. Okay. Yep. You just press down. I didn't even flip it over and rub the back. I think as as a stamp, it works really directly. That's good. 
So that's, I think that's good. Yep. And I'll crop the top off as we go. Okay? So, your turn! <laughs> okay, so you've decided on your colors. What are you going to do? I am doing a split one, split background, so yellow uh, with water-based screen printing ink. Mm -hmm. And then that one is You Do brand. And then I'm doing a Permaset Aqua textile printing ink in like this gorgeous peacock mm. color. Yeah. All right. You might use a couple of sprayers then to keep the colors separated. Unless you want them to mix in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Katja, you're doing what colors? Um, I'm going to do a blue Bombay India ink. And then I was going to do a pink or white peony, mm -hmm. but apparently when I do the stamp, it'll lift off anyway, so I'm not sure if I'll need that. Okay. So I'll see what happens. That's not exactly what I was looking for, but mm -hmm. we'll go with it. So you're going to print that base layer, or are you going to put a stencil on it? What do you, what do you want to I do? am going to print the base layer. Okay. Ooh, that's fuzzy. <laughs> That's a nice thing about fabric, right there. Quite yes. lovely. Yeah. Yes. So now, when I lift off the peony, mm -hmm. yeah, put it straight it. down okay. and push on it. Try not to wiggle it, and then lift it straight back up, and that should be really good. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Yep. Oh, I didn't do it right. What happened? I've got I've got an edge here. I've got it going up the edge, but that's okay. I'll just try it and see what happens. Can you pass the thing? So for your next layer, Katie Rose, what are you gonna do? Um I do believe I'm just going to put black over it. Yes. And I was gonna say, yeah. Go from there. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Look at that cut, yeah. Well, it turned out quite nice. Yeah. You can't really, it's an interesting design, but you can't really tell that it's a flower. That's a peony, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll yeah. try something. You need a stamp that maybe a little deeper, but yeah. with paper that would work. But yeah. What I would do then is uh, ink up your peony in a different color and stamp it directly on the, okay, on the, the paper, um, yeah. in front of you if you want to get some water on your hands. <laughs> I think I'll be okay. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to make it quite intense. I would add a little bit more pigment to that. It's not going to show up here, is it? Okay. For pink? A little more pink, yeah. Ooh. That's neat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now that's quite dark, so if you want to have things on top, mm -hmm. now you start thinking about maybe our little geometric print things or something else, mm. and uh, maybe a mix of um, gold and white or silver and white to brighten up some areas. 
or yellow. Green, but you have to add white to the yellow to make it pounds stand on top, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. Or leave it as is and do something else. You know, sometimes less is more. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. really loving it. Yeah. And I'm loving that I can see the trees in there, but mm -hmm. I have like pops of yellow out. Yep. So I think we're going to leave that one as okay. it is right now. Okay. For sure. Yep. So now I'm wondering if this is actually going to work because my lines are filled in with the ink. Yep. Uh, get off as much as you can. Right. And. So what else do I want to do? Ooh. Yeah, I would maybe run that idea again and... Um, mm -hmm. I can leave this on it, yep. can't I? Yep, All yep. Right. And just put this directly on? Yep, just print it on. Yep. Especially in the white area, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think run that idea again. Yeah. yeah, see what I mean? That yeah, you really need that intense color, yeah. yeah. Not okay. saying you can't print it again, yeah. right? So, okay. Or try another one, leave that subtle, you know, whatever you want to do. It's quite nice. Yeah. I like our little spots and things. That's when the paint separated because mm -hmm. of the ink. Uh, the plate itself uh, is yeah. more, more water and ink, right? So yeah. that's why I use the other mediums with it and that. What you can do, Katie Rolls, is in that case, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Is uh, uh, do it either with that thing or use the little stylus and bring some pattern, like some of those um, log shaped patterns in there, and print over top to see if that will. Mm. Add some white to it. I think it's going to separate again. Okay. Use some and I add like your that. medium. Thanks. Oops. I like that. Even if I'm just doing it on paper? Aha. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, you're still going to get those separation. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. Yep. All right. A little bit of the medium. Yeah. open thinner so it stays yeah workable yeah if you're messing with it for a while yeah so now i've got a bunch of globs of it how do i get that extra roll off? It, yeah roll and it roll off. it off on your rolling off paper well i'll just try it with this sure yeah. I like your sense of adventure, Kate. <laughs> Just go for it. Yeah. Nice catch. I see you don't need. Yeah. yeah. And then you can. That's your base. No, you can overprint. Yeah. Try the little geometric shapes with with doing your flower shapes on there. I think that might be more effective. Put it up yeah. down here. Mm -hmm. Just freehand draw, you know, with the with the tool. Can I just put it onto the gel plate and then? Yes, I think it? so. Yeah. But again, that, that intensity, you need lots of white and lots of that color so that mm. it will print over the top of that really intense blue. Right. Okay. Yes. I really like now it really subtle. looks very forestry. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice and subtle. Mm -hmm. I love that. And then once you crop the ends off that confuse you, you know, it, it, the image will really be I like that. Oh, I plan on taking these prints and cutting them up mm -hmm. and scrapping them yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Um, yeah, I'll be looking forward to seeing some of that. Okay. Okay. We have some more. I want you, to yeah, try one, one more. I think one more. 
Yeah. Put it on here? Put it on there. Yeah. And then what you take away will be like the shadow in the flower. And then use your staff. Yeah. I use why not use that little one? This one? Yeah. Let's see if that works for you. Yeah. Lift off. Yeah, I'm just gonna come off. Yep, not too bad. Yep. And then flip her over and stamp it on here. Move that down. So sometimes you have to worry as to intensity of color in the background, right? That's a, you really have to add a lot of white then to make it work for you. Yeah, it's too, too globby. But you can go back into it with yeah. Posca pens once that dries yeah. to outline with black or some other color. It looks pretty good. Yeah. It looks sort of like a moon shape in the sky. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to the flower. Yeah, try it directly if it works. Yeah. Yeah, the more you do the colors, I notice the muddier they're getting. It will, yeah. Which is neat, too. Yeah, and the fabric won't pick up quite as much, right? But it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that worked out better. Yes. Like so much. Yeah, you can do it. You can do those, yeah. Yeah, your daisies in the moonlight. <laughs> Uh, that's great. Oh, good. You're gonna have a little spot of blue at the bottom there. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Okay. So inks work, but you have to add stuff to them. Now we know. Yeah. In that corner at the top, just print it and see what happens. There we go. The rule of threes, right? Yeah, that one actually looks better than that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we now we know less paint is better. Well, on paper, yeah. of course. With fabric, that might have been a bit different. You're getting really good at lining that okay. up. <laughs> If it's still kind of um, liquid on there, I'll uh, use some paper towel and lift the extra okay. off and see what happens. Mm. On paper you can do that, right? So. There we go. Wow. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Very totemic. Oh, I like this. This is going to be so much fun to sew up. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we done? <laughs> yeah. How did that work? That's um, fun. Better? It's, it's better, but it's still not mm -hmm. as good as these ones. I think I put yeah. way too much. Yeah. It's too liquid. Ink is, is a problem, right? Yeah. So you're better off with ink. Paint. But we had to try it, yeah. and now we know. Excellent. Okay, good work, ladies. Um, thank you. So, well, it's been fun having you here. We'll have to do it again. This was awesome. Yes. And uh, really enjoyed our afternoon together. Thank you for having so. us out. <laughs> so it's been an exciting afternoon uh, doing printmaking with these wonderful ladies and artists. And uh, we hope you'll join us again for a future episode where we bring other people in or it's just me working along in Sherline studio. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you another time. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now. Bye.